real quick, real quick, give me one, give me one, give me one. You don't have to ask if you listen to me, dude. Uh, bucket bro. Back corner bucket bro. Hustle back, save two. That almost didn't get in there. That's it. There you go, good with your feet. We got a chance. We're not there by any means yet. I mean, we're not close by any means yet. But we still got some days left to go, and, and our job is to try to get them to where we're a productive offense. All right, back to that quarterback-quarterback coach relationship. Uh, Eric Ainge, your number one coming into the season. Uh, since you've taken back over here, Coach, what have you been working with him specifically on, from mechanics to mindset, mentally, everything? What do you work with him on? Well, well we went back to square one again. Everything we're doing, and um, you know, everybody has their way of coaching, and mine has always been just from the ground up. Uh, so we started talking about the mechanics. Now, hear me tell you about mechanics with quarterbacks. It's from the neck up and the neck down. The fundamentals, you train them over and over and over. Uh, what, what I call them are habit drills. And if you do something right finally a thousand times, then you're going to do it right consistently. And so I'm a big drill guy and a big tempo guy. We've tried to get that out of them at practice. Uh, when they're through with practice, whether it's spring practice or preseason, they better be wet and tired because we're going to work that way. Then from the mechanics, uh, mentally, uh, there's a toughness that, that has to take place. Uh, confidence is earned. You know, people expect us to give a guy confidence. Uh, you can't do that. Leadership abilities are earned. You don't, you don't issue that to somebody. You don't declare them a captain and make them, or a quarterback and make them a leader. Uh, so we've really tried to teach every part of it. And, and in doing so, again, you're talking about that relationship between a quarterback and a quarterback coach. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time with those guys, whether it's in casual conversation or whether it's in the meeting room. Did you find that Eric had lost a little confidence possibly after last year's something of a rocky season? Well, there's no doubt. Um, you know, I think confidence was tested all across the board here, uh, you know, going five and six and then ultimately uh, you know, Eric having things pretty much blow up on him. He was a 19-year-old when he went through that. He's a young guy, and uh, that's a challenge in itself. So uh, you have to support him, make him understand it. And, you know, basically uh, I have a thing in offense where you're always, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm uh, conservative all the time, but you stop the worst first. And, and once you learn to do that, you don't let these big bad things happen to you then good things ultimately will happen. Give me a, a week during the regular season. What's mm -hmm. your schedule like with the quarterback? Well, we are, we, we, you know, we're tied down uh, with NCAA rules, and uh, we have a 20-hour work week with them. Three hours of that is game time. Uh, but we're, we're going to um, utilize every minute we can get. We have a four-hour day maximum uh, when, when I can. Uh, if we've got an hour and 40 on the field and no weights, then I'm going to use two hours and 20 minutes of meeting time. And, uh, you know, there are various times, and we're, we're kind of reworking our schedule potentially a little bit as to what we do what day of the week. But, uh, you know, they're going to come by, and they're going to watch tape on their own. They're going to send me a list of questions where it's not actual meeting time. You know, I'm going to have suggested things. Uh, for them to look at and to work and worksheets to work up. Then I also give them tests. Uh, I give them tips and reminders to review. Uh, they fill out comment sheets. Um, you know, it's pretty much a full-time job. And then, you know, they know I expect this out of a quarterback. They better not miss a class. They better not miss an assignment. We're going to be on track to graduate. We're going to do the little things right because winning in life is an all the time thing. And you know, that's really important for our quarterbacks. And if you look, our quarterbacks have been extremely successful both on and off the field. And I think that's one of the keys uh, to that happening. You make the play call. Does Eric Ainge, will he have total freedom to check, to change the play? Or yeah, they the never have total freedom. <laughs> uh, they work within parameters, even uh, Peyton Manning's of the world. Uh, you give them parameters. You, we, a lot of times we'll give them two plays in the signal, and they know and they're coached, if this look will do this, this look will do that. But we have base checks going into a game plan, and if you get this front, and then this is what we're checking to. Or if you get this front, 
but not every front calls, uh, causes us to check. So a big portion of the game plan is call and run it. A big portion of it is a two play, what we call at the lines. And then another big portion always is the ability, and this is freedom, to audible a play versus a look that we think may give us trouble otherwise. Anything unusual? You've been in this game a long time. Anything funny, anything unusual happen to you during the course of a game? Well, I mean, there's all kinds of unusual things that are going <laughs> to occur during the game. But, you know, to give people an idea of what goes on, uh, you know, that people don't know or don't see, uh, we're, we're Peyton's quarterback in here, and we're down in, uh, in Alabama, and uh, we are in a goal line situation against a really good Alabama defense. And I had told him on the bus on the way over, uh, I said, listen, if the signaler points at you after giving you a play, then I don't want you to tell anybody. And, and I said, no other coach knows this. I want you to call that play. You fake it to the tailback, and then you belly the ball, and you keep it. And uh, it became known as the point. And anyway, we call it, and I tell the signaler, I said, hey, I said, now point at Peyton. He said, what? I said, point at Peyton. He said, okay. So he points at Peyton. Peyton calls it. Um, we run the play, and the back that he faked to, didn't know he wasn't getting the ball, launches. Well, he actually got in the end zone. Peyton has the ball. Nobody in the stadium, including Alabama's defense, knows it until it's too late, and he scores. But our linemen who blocked that play see the back. They're signaling touchdown. They're celebrating with the back. And Peyton's got the ball over here, and he's the one that actually scored. So it was a pretty neat fake. If you want to get a great fake, just don't tell anybody on occasion. <laughs>you know they can't do it they can't really do anything with you in the summertime so it makes it tough but i mean once you get to camp i mean it's you got to have you got to have a good relationship I, you see him so much if you didn't have a good relationship you wouldn't have any fun so it's all day every day for about 3 weeks what do you feel like after a bit of a rocky season last year what do you feel like that you and he or and you individually have really worked on and need to work on going into the 2006 year just from the neck up understand not just understanding the play or not understanding the defense or this zone blitz but or what it looks like but what it is why they do it you know the philosophy behind stuff you know not just teaching us you know a pass play but teaching us every different you know thing about the pass play and everything the defense could possibly do to that set you know just it's just a mental a mental game you know playing the chess game and i think that just the strides that i've already made i mean i can see big difference when I'm out there on the field. Three-step drop is something that's going to be quick. You know, we call it a quick game. So you're going to take one big step, you're going to try to get away, you got to get away from the line, and then you got to align your, separate. yeah, you got to align your drop on your second step. So if you're throwing to the left, your second step is going to have to be turn, turn, so you can come off and use your hips. You know, you can't, you can't go straight, 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 otherwise you end up having to step and it ends up being more like a four-step drop. You know, so coach, you know, coach Cut always sees you, you're big here, eyes down the field, small, small ball. And it's the same if you're going to the right, it's just big, small, small ball. That way you can come out and get the ball there on time. What's the most important thing in being a quarterback? Is, is it the mental? Is it the physical? Is it the arm? Is it the footwork? It's not the physical. It's, it's definitely not the physical. Uh, the most important thing about being a quarterback is being able to, is being able to lead the team and being able to, you know, run the show you know you could say run the show because everything starts and everything ends with you I mean, you, you call the you get the play you call the play you snap the ball you get it to the athletes in space it, you know it's that's all that's all part of your job you know there's been great quarterbacks that don't have great arms or great feet but they know how to run the show and they're smart you know so and i feel like i do have a great arm and i do have good feet so 
you know, now, you know, I'm able to piece the mental part to it and, you know, the leadership role and I'm able to, you know, do all that, those kind of things that Coach Cutts brought mm -hmm. to me, you know, and I see, I see big strides in myself already and our football team. Talking about that leadership, what, what would be your leadership style? Are you a rah-rah guy in the huddle? Are you quiet leadership? How do you do that? It's a little of both. I think you really got to be, I think you really got to pick your times for the rah-rah because if you don't, you know, then it just kind of gets, you know, you know, you know, it just kind of gets, okay, you know, Ainge is talking again. You don't, and you don't want that. You want to lead by example more important than anything. And you got to be mentally tough. If you can lead by example and you're mentally tough, then the guys are going to see it. You know, the guys in the field are out there working, you know, working harder than I am. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they see stuff like that. Eric, what's it like in the huddle with, with you at quarterback? Do you talk to the receivers? What are you doing? What can you do? Do you talk to the linemen about what's going on? What do you do? You, you talk to them a little bit, but when you're actually out there in the huddle on the field and the way the game's going to be even faster this year, you know, you, you got 25 seconds from when it's blown and most, you know, you're seldomly out of the huddle when the whistle's blown for play. You get to the ball usually, hopefully, if you're a good team with about 20 seconds, you know, maybe, you know, maybe 15 or 16 seconds. And so, I mean, you don't really have time in the huddle to be, you know, having conversations. You can say, hey, we're about to, you know, like if, you, if we're going to run a pass play, I can say, hey, the corner's doing this, so do that, you know, fake that and go here, mm -hmm. you know, or look outside before you come. You know, you can tell them a little quick, a quick note like that, right. but you can't, just, you can't just sit there and talk to them.